something from the devil. You will steal what does not belong to you. The devil is the postmaster that posts things to you. And we call it symptom. So when your head is aching, one, 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 that is a symptom of headache. That is not headache. What you need to do is to reject the symptom that has come. You no, know, that is not my portion. But my body is not the temple of headache. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the postmaster will return with that parcel. But when you say, oh, I have headache, oh, I have. So you have received the symptom. And you have given it a name. Headache. And that is how the devil is now qualified to make sure you have a headache. Everybody can have symptoms. But you don't give it a seat. Don't give it, don't make it work. Else you are a thief. You are now stealing things from the postmaster. From the postmaster deception. From the devil's deception. You are taking what is not yours. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible says, nobody can receive anything if it is not given to him from above. His sickness from above, his poverty from above, his failure from above. Therefore, don't claim what is not from above. Only that which is from above is what is supposed to be yours as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. We're looking at seven generators of faith. The fifth one is understanding and knowledge. Five. Faith is directly proportional to knowledge. To increase your faith, you have to increase your knowledge. To increase your faith, you have to increase your knowledge. If you lack understanding of spiritual realities, spiritual principles, your faith will be limited. There are people who don't know or who don't even understand that God is a faith God, that His word is a faith word. And that being a God of principles, that God will not do for them what they are supposed to do for themselves. And anybody who does not understand that it is the will of God to heal him or her will not be able to exercise his or her faith to receive the healing. Knowledge is what strengthens faith, releases faith, and empowers faith. So if you don't know, you will not even think of exercising your faith. The seat you are sitting on now is because you know it is a seat. That's why you come and sit on it. You now have faith to sit on it. Number two, you know the capacity that it can carry you. So that knowledge energized, builds up faith, gives birth to faith that the seat can carry me and you sit on it. But if they bring something, you don't know whether it is, you don't know what it is. You don't know that it is seat. Even if you see it, and you want to sit down, you will not sit. You don't know whether it is an electric uh, chair that can shock you, and so on and so forth. Knowledge, faith is directly proportional to knowledge. So, how do I build my faith? Build your knowledge. How do I grow in faith? Seek knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more faith you have. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, somebody can be saved, and yet you lack the understanding of faith. Or prosperity because the person has not been taught in the doctrine of prosperity and therefore they will lack the requisite knowledge through faith on that aspect and even though he's a child of god he may still be poor why is poor is not because poverty is not part of i mean prosperity is not part of salvation but he does not know or she does not know faith comes where knowledge some people don't understand that our confession of circumstances feeds feed such circumstances and gives them authority over our lives, whether good or bad. Our confession of circumstances, like I've talked about symptoms. Oh, I have a headache. Hi, this is my headache will destroy me. The more you are confessing that circumstances, the more the circumstances is lodging it over you. That's why the Bible says, let you weak. Say, I'm strong. Don't confess that circumstance. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Therefore, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. 
Point number six, sixth generator of faith is practice. Here I want to talk about action, not just ideas. Latin says uh, res, non verba, action, not words. Many people have the idea that God can do all things and can use anybody, but they don't actually include themselves. They don't actually include themselves. Therefore, what they are saying is the moment you start practicing, practicing something, the more you see your faith in that thing coming up. Oh, I'm a believer. Can I actually hear the Bible say those who believe can lay hands on sick? I'm afraid. But the first day I go and heal, I call somebody. Whether he or not, the yoke of fear is getting broken. My faith is building up because I've started practicing. The second day I pray for sick, the person gets healed. Oh, so I can even perform miracles. So I can heal. My faith is growing because I am practicing. So it's not enough to carry the Bible. It's not even enough to understand it. Now I have to do what? You put it into practice. The more you practice your, your faith, the more you have faith. Hey, can I preach? I remember when I started preaching newly. If I enter a verse, I will preach. So it won't be fair to reach that pool there. I will stand up. But mm -hmm. then it was luxurious. Yeah. My heart will be pumped. Boom, boom. But we will pass that pool. So no problem. When we reach the other pool, I will stand up. That's how until eventually I stood up. But when I stood up, as why well, it is very easy because the grace will come for how to start. So because I stood up to preach for the first time, so to preach for the second time, the tension, the more I do it, the more the tension reduces. So I can stand up any moment, anywhere to preach because I actually started practicing. Praise. So what we need to do is to put the word of God into God promises, or the word of God promises that if I ask something, I will get it. That is Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. So if I believe, then I have to act on that word that I receive. And therefore, I don't need to keep asking and asking. So if you believe the word of God, you have to put it into practice. And then you start by doing, giving the right confession. The right confession. Thank you, God, for you have given me. because. I have asked. We begin to thank God. You see, there are two kinds of facts. They are all facts, but we have the faith fact, and then we have the faith fact will produce the physical fact. There are two facts. When the weak says, "I am strong," he was is not telling lies, but he's not confessing physical fact. The physical fact is already said the weak. But there's a, spirit, a faith fact or the spiritual fact which is strong. Because in the word of God, it's called that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that joy is there. So you are strong. So that's why the weak will say, I am strong. Praise God. Amen. But when the weak says, I am strong, the Bible already called him the weak, meaning he's weak. But the point the Bible is not saying is, don't confess the physical fact. Confess the faith fact. It is the faith that actually gives birth or overrides, overshadows, transforms, or changes the physical fact. And that's why it is said, don't confess what you see. Instead, confess what you want to see. And that thing you confess, you begin to change that thing that you are seeing. That is why it is a faith, you know, thing. If I, you may be sick, you may feel sickness. Yeah, the Bible uses healing in the past tense by his stripes. You were healed. So you may now choose to confess that which has been accomplished long ago or the one that you are feeling now. And because that what has been accomplished long ago is older, is superior to what is happening now. It's like something done yesterday and something being done today. The one done yesterday is superior. So by his time we are healed is in the past. So Jesus has accomplished healing for the whole world, but probably today there is sickness. Use the one that is superior, confess the one that is superior, and let it displace or replace the present one, the present physical reality. Praise God. Um, that's why 
You see, I believe I am here to show that it is a faith confession, not a fact confession. Somebody may see that you are sick, but you say, you are not saying, I am not sick. That will be telling lies. Just like as I'm sitting down now, I will not say, I am not sitting down. But I can say in my mind, I'm standing up. You are in my mind. You see it. But everybody see that I'm sitting down. But in my mind, I can be standing up. That is spiritual, the unseen reality. You are seeing me as sitting down, but in my mind, I am standing up. That is just kind of an example. So there is something that is not seen to the eyes, but it is a reality. So you say, I believe I am here. I believe I have words. I believe it is where, and so on and so forth. That is it. So you release faith first. The faith you release will now work on the physical reality. Because faith is faith in the word of God. And God cannot lie. By covenant and by faith, you believe that God's word is sure. So you confess, I am rich, even when you are owing many people. You confess because the Bible says he became poor, that we might become rich. And so, since he has already become poor, is complete, is, is accomplished. I begin to confess my own portion. That is why, if you understand it, your confession does not have to do with the physical reality. It has to do with the spiritual reality. And then the spiritual reality will now work on the physical effect, the physical reality, and transform it. That is what we mean by the duality of existence. How long it will take for spiritual to superimpose on the physical, we may not do, but we sustain it by continuous thanksgiving. Be careful for not, for in everything. The Bible says, keep on thanking God by prayer and supplication. We thanksgiving make your request. No, we thanksgiving. We keep thanking God. Finally, the seventh generator of faith is the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22 and verse 23. It says, He surely, Yahweh's mercies are not over. His deeds of faithful love not exhausted. Every morning they are renewed. Great is his faithfulness. As it is written in the other version, the steadfastness of the Lord never ceases. May cease never come to an end. He are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. The faithfulness of God is great and is never ending. And I conclude by what I call Gabriel's formula. Gabriel's formula, which is the power of testimony. That's what I call Gabriel's formula. In Luke chapter 1, verse 36, he says, I tell you this too, you are cousin Elizabeth also in her old age has conceived a son. When Angel Gabriel told the Blessed Virgin Mary what was to happen, that she will conceive and have a child, her question in verse 34 was, How can it be? Because I know not a man. So, but when Gabriel put before her, the faithfulness of God to her cousin. She now released her faith and said, Be it done unto me according to God. First of all, she was, How can this happen? Gabriel said, Oh, it's God, all things are possible. For he has already shown mercy to her cousin. In that one people call Mary is already in her sixth mood. When Mary saw the faithfulness of God unto her cousin Elizabeth, she believed her own faith was aroused in what is known as Mary's heart. She said, 
be it done unto me according to the word. That is, after Gabriel has told her about Elizabeth. But before Gabriel told her about Elizabeth, he was asking Gabriel, how can this happen? This is like an impossible task. How can I become pregnant? And I thought to the man, Gabriel said, it's not even about only you. God has even started doing impossible things in your family. That you are cousin that people call Barry. He's old. That touched me. This is somebody that's already old. According to science, if it is to be biology, not that we're dealing with zoology. <laughs> zoology. <laughs> There's no zoology anyway. It's biology. Because it's beyond science. And if it is science, they will say it's middle post. The middle has post. But God, is, it's not about Zoe. Cannot pause. So God has already started doing impossible things mm. to your cousin. When Mary heard of the faithfulness of God to Elizabeth, she said, Let it be done to me. As you have said, her faith rose up. The faithfulness of God in another person's life. This is why we share testimony. You mean that this thing I am experiencing now, that sister has experienced it, and she's now sharing her testimony of how God's. And that means how it will not make me to develop faith that I will also share testimony. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean that this sickness troubling my life, troubling my family, that it troubled the other person's family, and they came out of it? Oh, the same God that they are serving, the same God I'm serving, it will shoot up faith, it will shoot up my faith. That is why when testimonies are shared, the greatness or the faithfulness of God is being showcased and it bends faith in the life of the listener. For our God is ever faithful. If you did it yesterday, you will do it again today. If you did it to A, you can do it to B. If you did it to sister, you can do it to brother. If you did it to one brother, you can do it to another brother. And so on and so forth. The faithfulness of God. That is what I call Gabriel's common. It is very potent. It does not fail. That's why sometimes when you go out to evangelize, you share testimony. You are using Gabriel's formula and it you know, imparts faith upon the believers, upon the hearers. You call upon to strengthen our faith through Christ. Amen. Amen.